Heavenly Father, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. Lord, we thank you for this sweet reminder today of the strength and power of your eternal love for your people. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. How wonderfully adorned we are in the garments of your grace, Lord Jesus. How great is the love which you have bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. You are our Father, our Husband, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Friend, faithful in all your ways and loving to all you have made. Lord, our hearts are full of gratitude for this wonderful gift that you've given to your bride, your church, to gather under the banner of your love, which you have stretched out across this nation from coast to coast and invited us to feast upon the rich banquet of your love that you have prepared in yourself for us in this season. You know exactly what we need and you always give us the best of yourself. You're a faithful husband, Lord Jesus. Truly all that we desire is the joy of your presence, Lord, and the fullness of yourself. We love you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Lord, keep taking us higher up and deeper into the holy of holies of intimacy with you, the one our heart loves. We love you with all our heart, Lord. In your wonderful and worthy name, we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of you here this evening as we bring our petitions before the Lord, the 6 o'clock hour, 3 o'clock on the West Coast. I mean, yeah, with our friends at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. It's so good to see you all. I'm glad you could be with us. And everyone else that's with us online, I just want to thank you for coming. Um, we're... Our devotional this morning, we were talking about this wonderful scripture. This is in Isaiah 54. I encourage you to read the whole, that whole chapter, 54. It says in verse 5, though, For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Israel's redeemer and their husband is none other than the Lord of hosts which is the name, the banner that we're coming under in this season, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And we know that the Lord covenanted his fidelity with Israel at Mount Sinai. That is where he married them to himself. And they committed to their marriage vows to be faithful to him. And we know from Israel's history, according to the scriptures, that they were not. But God was always faithful. And he loves them and he remains their husband to this day. But he covenanted with them under this mighty militant name, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. It's a name that speaks of God's holiness, his sovereignty. It means that he is the warrior and defender of his people. And he particularly has a special interest and family rights, because he's our father. He loves us, and he wants his children home safe with him. He has a special love upon his people Israel, and also upon every person who comes to Christ by faith. We come under that same special love, his covenant of love, his eternal love, which we read in Song of Solomon at noon, that that love is eternal. It's a jealous and a zealous love. It burns like fire. And it cannot be quenched. It's eternal. It's everlasting. But there's one thing I wanted to call your attention to at this hour, and that's at the very end of chapter 54. This last verse here, with which we're all very familiar with. We pray it a lot. We speak it a lot. It says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, 
you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. The heritage of every servant of the Lord is this, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. And we can see that throughout all of church history. This speaks of the preservation of the church, the preservation of the saints. We have protection from Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. We have protection from our God, our husband, our redeemer, from the hand of men. They cannot touch us. They can have their armies arrayed in battle against the servants of the Lord, but according to scripture, Whatever weapons they raise up against us, they shall not prosper. And we've seen that throughout history. And yes, we've seen also that Lord has allowed his saints to be martyred, allowed them to be put in prisons. Those things have happened. But in the end, the Lord says, you will triumph. And has the church triumphed over history, throughout all history, whenever Anything came up against the church. Their weapons were turned on themselves. Though maybe the saints died. The church has prevailed. And it has remained strong. The truth is that each time um, a wave of persecution came across the church. It actually caused the bride of Christ to come forth more gloriously. Whenever uh, a despot ruler came along to try to, like a Haman in the Esther's day. He wanted to silence the Jewish people. He even built the gallows. He built his weapon. And what happened? He was hung on them. So whenever we see the enemy coming to try to stop the church, it actually results in their multiplication. And so we need to look at persecution as not a bad thing. It's one of the tools that God uses to multiply his church, to empower his church, to strengthen his church. He also says that when people speak evil and revile you, every tongue that comes against you in judgment, you'll condemn it. I mean, who can contend against the church when the church is using their mighty tongue, their weapon, to pray? And that's why we're here. It's why the Lord called us in this season to pray where we can contend and do battle in the heavenly realm because our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6 tells us that. So we have to put on our full armor and then pray. Pray unceasingly, pray continuously, pray fervently. So this is, this is an important word for us to stand upon. Whatever you're going through, wherever you're facing persecution, We know that the Lord has promised no weapon formed against you. It doesn't matter what's going to come up against the church in the days ahead. They will not prosper. And no matter who speaks maliciously against you or condemns you or accuses you in judgment, they themselves will be condemned. And he says that. That's the heritage. That's our heritage as the servants of the Lord. And then he says this, and their righteousness is from me. That's how we know we can stand and we can prosper and we can proclaim the gospel without fear and we can advance the kingdom of God in our time because our righteousness is from the Lord. We have a right standing with him. He's clothed us in his robe of righteousness. Matthew 5 tells us this. This is verse 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so the Lord is equipping his servants in this day, and he's calling us to pray, because that's our powerful weapon. That's where we're going to bring down blessing upon the earth. That's where we're going to silence the enemy and crush his head. And we're going to be able to advance the kingdom of God in our day. 
So today we are just going to stand on that word, recognize the power we have, to stand against the evil forces, to do battle in the heavenly realm, and let's lay hold, hold of the hem of the Lord's garment and just bring down power from heaven for the many prayer requests that we have. I just encourage you, whatever it is that you're being embattled with, the things that God's laying on your heart to pray for, whether it's the, this election, this nation, the church, for your marriage, for the prodigal children, for those who need salvation, the many who are sick and frail and weak and dying, the multitude of loss around us, those who are suffering, people with financial trouble. There are so many needs that we need to be praying for. And this is our hour to contend and to silence the enemy, to stand beside our brothers and sisters like an Aaron and her and hold up their hands in their time of weakness, to bear one another's burdens and to cry out to God on their behalf. The Lord will hear and he will bless. So let's go before the Lord. You're welcome to come up here to the altar. We have some carpet down here, rugs. You can pray into the microphone. It'll be up here. And then there's a microphone in the center. Please feel free to stand up there and pray. We have, you know, all of our brothers and sisters all across the country listening and standing with us and praying together. And they love to hear our prayers. It encourages them. It brings healing to them brings hope. And so please, if, if you're able to stand up and use the microphones and do that, I just encourage you. Let's go before the Lord. Let's lift up his mighty name. He's our husband. He will not fail us. He's our redeemer. He died for us. He's our savior and our Lord. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He's our defender. He's our warrior. Let's go before him. We are before you, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, our mighty warrior king. God, we praise you, Lord that we stand in the place of power because we've been washed in your blood. We are robed in a robe of righteousness. You've adorned us in a garment of salvation. We are your royal sons and daughters, and tonight you hold out your scepter and say, come and ask. You'll give us the whole kingdom. It's ours for the asking. And Lord, we're asking you to do that tonight. Just open up the windows of heaven. Open those storehouses and let us come and have our fill. There are so many needs, Lord. Lead us in our prayer, Holy Spirit. Guide us. Lord Jesus, you say in Jeremiah 33, this, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the God, Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Lord, your mercy endures forever and you're calling your people up in this hour to stand in the gap for the most vulnerable in our world, for those who are oppressed. So Lord, we ask God, that you would give your bride the boldness and courage to stand up and to stand in the gap and protect and advocate for those who are the weakest and the most vulnerable in our land. This is your heart, Lord Jesus. You are the defender of the helpless and the weak. Psalm 82, 3 says, defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Proverbs 31, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. 
Proverbs 29 says that the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. Lord of hosts, you are the defender of family rights. You care for the widow and the orphan and the alien. You use your mighty power to uphold justice, especially for those who do not have a powerful ally. You tell us in Isaiah 1 that we should learn to do right and to seek justice, to defend the oppressed and take up the cause of the fatherless, to plead the case of the widow. Lord, we, we stand in the gap, Lord. We know your heart cares for the widows and the orphans, the fatherless, Lord. In Deuteronomy 10, you tell us what does the Lord your God require of you? He administers justice to the fatherless and the widow. So Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to open the eyes and the hearts of your people to stand in the gap. Lord, to move with your compassionate heart. Isaiah 58 tells us, is this not the kind of fasting I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? True fasting is not about just these disciplines, Lord, but it's actually pursuing justice. And you tell us in James 1 that the religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Lord, your heart is so full of compassion for the needy. You hear the voice of those who cry out to you. You are the defender of the weak. You deliver them from oppression and violence. For every life is precious in your eyes. O oh, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, would you surround the weak and the vulnerable with your angel army? Rescue those who rescue them from those who seek their harm, who want to destroy them. You tell us in Psalm 72 that you will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no help. You will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. You will rescue them from oppression and violence, for they're, they are precious in your sight. Lord, you told us tonight in your word in, in Isaiah 54 that no weapon formed against them will stand, and they will refute every accusing tongue. God, we ask right now this evening for every wicked person who has in their mind to take anyone captive tonight, we speak on behalf of Lord, all those who are being human trafficked, Lord, we say, foil their wicked designs. Let them fall into their own traps. Rescue those, Lord, who need your help at this moment. Lord, protect them with your angel army. God, we praise you, Lord, that you are the defender of the poor and the oppressed, that you care for the widows and the orphans, the fatherless, Lord. Come with your mighty power, Lord Jesus. Move your people to stand in the, in the gap. We praise you, Lord. In your mighty name, amen.
Father God, we just lift up our children to you, Lord. God, we ask that you would break strongholds over them, Lord. Father, so many of them have been taken captive by the enemy to do his will. So, Lord, we ask that you release them from the grip of the enemy. We ask that no weapon formed against them would prosper. Lord God, we ask that you would um, influence them by your Holy Spirit. Give them the mind of Christ, Lord. Soften their heart, O oh God. Father, so many of them have exchanged the truth for the lie. We ask you to change that and that they would exchange the lie for the truth, Lord, because you are the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. You are the spirit of truth, and we ask that you would come upon our children, Lord, and transform them, oh God. Just remove the blindfold from their eyes and their heart. Cause them to see you in truth, Lord. Bring revelation to their sin, oh God, that they would see their sin as you see it, and they would see their desperate need for you, Lord. Father, in your kindness, we ask that you would lead them to repentance, oh God. Bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that they would love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and they would follow you all of the days of their life. In Jesus' name. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Lord, you tell us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
Lord, I would like to call out to you to put your hand on our election. You know all the believers around this country that are praying to you. And I ask you, Lord, that you would supernaturally ensure that the truth comes out about this election, that it's a fair election, and that anything that the enemy has devised to make this election not fair, that you will supernaturally overcome that. We know you have the power to do that. We've watched you supernaturally protect Israel, ask you to supernaturally protect our election so that those believers here in this country can continue to live in a free country that honors you. In Jesus' name. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. O oh Lord, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to, compared, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Would you comfort, Lord, those who are suffering and sorrowing, who are in pain and anguish today, with the knowledge, Lord, that you are using it for your glory. Help them to persevere. Give them that added grace. For your grace is sufficient. Your power is made perfect in our weakness, Lord. In Jesus' name. O oh Lord, you are a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows. You set the solitary in families, 
You bring out those who are bound into prosperity. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts. Lord, we pray for those. Lord, for the orphans, but for those who have that orphan spirit, Lord. You promised us in John 14, 18, you said, I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to help you. I'm coming back to you. Lord, would you help them to know that they are not alone? Lord, that you who keep Israel will never slumber nor sleep. In John 1, you said, but to all who receive you, who believe on your name, you give power to become children of God. Lord, so give them the hope that they can be part of the family of God. Romans 8 says, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. Lord, would you comfort the orphans and those with that spirit with the truth of their worth and security in your family. Help them to feel wonderfully loved and accepted by the arms of God and all of God's family. Give them that sense of belonging and worth, Lord. God, we just pray for those who are bound by that spirit, who are seeking solace and acceptance in the world. Bring them back to you, Lord Jesus. Bring them back to the family of God. Help them to feel the Father's love powerfully. Lord Jesus. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with seal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. The coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. O oh Lord, we praise you, Lord the confidence that we have in this day when it seems like the enemy is advancing against your church. You have promised to raise up a standard against him. And in this season, Lord, you're doing just that, raising up a mighty army of warriors in prayer to contend for the kingdom of God and for your church. Lord, help us, equip us, 
Let us put on our full armor and to take our stand against the enemy. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord, for being our daddy and loving us, Lord. And uh, Lord, I want to lift up my father to you as prostate cancer, Lord. And I just ask, Lord, that you would just uh, let the blood of Jesus flow over him, Lord, and that he would be healed, Lord. Uh, he starts proton therapy this week, Lord, and we just ask for you just to just cleanse his body, Lord, of the cancer, Lord, keep it away from other parts, Lord, and and, Lord, we just lift up all the folks within our churches, Lord, or the body, Lord, who have cancer, have sickness, Lord. And we just ask that you would just, uh, Lord, let the blood of Jesus just flow over them, Lord, and that you would astound us with your faithfulness, Lord, as we're already hearing good reports, Lord, even um, across the land, Lord, even now as we pray, Lord. And we know you're a faithful, Lord. Uh, we know that ultimately our healing uh, comes in you, Lord, uh, with you, with Christ, Lord, and that we get to spend eternity with you forever, Lord, in heaven, with perfect bodies, with no pain, no sickness, Lord. But we just ask you to to just do miracles across this land, Lord, in the in the sickness arena, Lord, and that you would just, uh, Lord, just encourage your children, Lord, to to be right with you at all times, Lord. We all need to be ready to go tomorrow, but planning on living forever, Lord. And we thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus, that we do get to live in victory every day with you, but also for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We praise you, Jehovah Rapha, for your healing hand upon all of these sick who need a touch of your grace today. Lord, I'd like to pray for all the people in this country that identify themselves as Christians, but who don't know you, that go to their churches, do their good works, but maybe because of their pride or their ignorance, they don't actually have a personal relationship with you. And Lord, those people are going to miss the rapture. And there's so many of them, so many more of them than there are of us. So, Lord, I just ask you to glorify yourself by opening their eyes, giving them a hunger to know more, to know you personally. Lord, I, my heart goes out to them. And it reminds me of the scripture where Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name? and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Or there's so many people who call themselves Christians who are living in lawlessness, whether they're living with their boyfriend or girlfriend or they're drinking, using foul language, watching the wrong things, being with the wrong people, and not living according to your will. Lord, just open their eyes. Lord, bring them to yourself so that we can save the whole body of Christ in time for your deliverance. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Along with that, I I lift up the church to you, Lord. And Father, I ask that the church may be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Lord God, that your bride may walk worthy of you, Lord, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Lord, that we would be strengthened with all might according to your glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Lord, that we'd be giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Lord, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of your love. And then we have redemption through your blood, the forgiveness of sins. God, thank you that although we are poor and needy, you think upon us. Thank you that you have tabernacled among us, God. And I pray that we would not grieve your heart as those in the wilderness who wandered because they did not believe your promises. They didn't believe your goodness. Lord, you have promised us that we have overcome through your blood and so I pray Jesus that we would not be those who do not enter into your rest because of unbelief but God I pray that you would give us the gift of faith as a child again that our hearts have grown dull or calloused any room that we've given to the enemy in our minds or in our hearts that have become habits that we don't even recognize God I pray that you would reclaim that inside of us I pray that our hearts could say to you, you are my portion. Thank you for taking up the cup of our suffering so that we can take up the cup of your salvation. And I pray, God, that we would not live as defeated believers in you, but that we would be strengthened in might through the inner man. I pray we would not fight as one who beats the air that we would not run with uncertainty. God, I pray that you would give us the strength to cast off every weight and every sin that ensnares us. God, we want to be effective until the end. We want to run a race with endurance that is set before us, forgetting the things that lie behind and pressing on toward the upward call of God in Christ Jesus that we might lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of us. Lord, our days are like shadows and our years like a sigh, but you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And you have called us by name. We are yours. You are eternal in the heavens. You are established. And Lord, those who do your will abide forever. And so I pray the fleeting life that we have as a vapor would be used for you in the fear of you, God, walking in your mercy and walking in your truth. I pray, Jesus, that we would not yield even for an hour to the enemy's lies, that he would not have any place, that anyone in this room or anyone listening or anyone in our hearts who are in bondage to addictions or anxieties or fears that you do not desire for them to have, that you would come and that you would save us, God. We are yours. Save us. Uphold us by your right hand, God. Send forth your mercy and let it lead us 
Send forth your mercy and your light and let it lead us to God, our exceeding joy. God, I pray that we would not turn our hearts away from you in our affliction, but that we would press in even closer to you and that you would preserve for us the promise of those who love your name and who resist temptation, that we would have the crown of life. And Lord, day by day, you would renew us and give us strength for each moment. I pray, God, that every breath we would remember you who gives it to us and that we would be in tune with your spirit, in tune with your voice, that our own thoughts would never crowd you out, that our own emotions we would not confuse with who you are, that you would give us clarity and direction and light, that you would open our eyes so we can see wondrous things from your law, that we would not grow weary in doing good, that we would be zealous and make us a people of prayer. Dwell among us, God, and let us dwell with you. We know this will not be taken away from us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Dear God, I pray that you will open the eyes of the church. I pray that you'll forgive us for pride. Forgive us for self-sufficiency. Forgive us for everything that relies on anything but you. Open, open our eyes. that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of our un understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance of his saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. 
which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, both in this world and in the world that is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and made him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power that you give to us. God, let us walk in that power and be overcomers in these last days. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your loving kindness and your long suffering toward us. God, help us to die to ourselves and take up our cross every day and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. O Lord, make us more like you. Give us that compassionate heart to think more of others and less of ourselves. to reflect the humility of your character, Lord Jesus, and to bring your salvation to all mankind. Help us to walk as you walk, Jesus.
the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. O oh Lord, I can see it. Lord, this deep cultivating, planting work you're doing in your people and the rebuilding and the restoring that's coming, Lord Jesus, repairing those old desolations, Lord, restoring the cities with streets to dwell in, Lord, you are raising up your people to be a beautiful planting of the Lord, and you are going to be glorified. Oh, Lord, we praise you that you've called us for such a time as this, and you are raising up a bride who's going to reign and rule with you, Lord, who will become, come before the throne and plead and ask, and you will give. Lord, all that we request. Oh, Lord, we're so humbled by this sweet touch of your presence and your grace in this season, Lord. We just drink deeply from this river of delights that you have opened up to us. Oh, Lord, we praise you for the gift of yourself, Lord. You're such a generous benevolent, kind, and loving Father, a gracious and caring, compassionate husband. We love you, Lord Jesus, our mighty warrior, Jehovah Sabaoth. The Lord will fulfill his purposes for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forget the work of your hands. We love you, Lord Jesus. In your mighty and powerful name, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I pray you go out in the joy of the Lord this evening. Enjoy your evening. I look forward to seeing you back here at 9 tomorrow. And just a reminder on Wednesdays, we just have the 9 o'clock hour and the noon o'clock, noon, noon o'clock, <laughs> noon hour. Uh, 6 o'clock will be the normal services for Wednesday nights. I look forward to seeing you, though. Be blessed in Jesus' name. <laughs>